I recall uh, when you announced that Chip Goodyear would not uh, proceed with his appointment. Um, you said something along the lines of the programs that Chip had put in place we continue to work on. But this was some months before uh, the date he should formally have stepped to the chief executive role. Could you clarify exactly what Chip Goodyear's involvement with Tomasic was in between the announcement when you said he would join and the announcement when you said he would not? I think uh, when Chip came on board as part of his integration into Tomasic, he became involved in a number of initiatives that were ongoing initiatives and played a leadership role in bringing those forward until the time that he, uh, he left us. We can, some of those initiatives have since been completed and others continue amongst the senior leadership and a work in progress. Were there any that he initiated that you could uh, tell us about that continue today? I think there were broad, uh, there were broad initiatives around organisation, around processes, um, how we make decisions. There are many different facets. Reuters. Uh, Saeed here from uh, Reuters. Uh, I just wanted to ask you... Uh, Sorry? Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, in light Otherwise of the crisis like last year... from somewhere. Okay. <laughs> in light of the crisis last year and some of the investments that didn't work uh, for Tomasek, what changes have you brought into your risk management uh, going forward and uh, how would you apply those changes? Uh, that's the first question. And second question is, uh, in your earlier comments, you... You, you talked about going into um, emerging economies, and you also said uh, when it comes to developing economy, developed economies, you, you, in the same sentence you said that we are open to investing in financial institutions if and when the right opportunities come. When you talk about financial institutions here, are you just talking about global financial institutions or Asian financial institutions? Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll take the, um, the risk part of your question. I think it should be understood that we have always had in place a very robust risk framework. Uh, this takes place at the level of individual investments, where they are considered very deeply at that point in time, as well as our measurement and view of the overall risk in our portfolio. I think from the crisis, perhaps, it's not a question of... There's some degree of learning. I think it's probably more a question of... It, it helps one adjust, if you will, your sense of sensitivity to different things. Um, part of the takeaway is, is to really come to terms with how important liquidity is um, and how powerful liquidity can become as a risk and to be very sure that under all scenarios going forwards that you are really in a position to manage whatever might emerge from that particular risk. I think it also brought into more focus the specific risks around counterparties in particular. But there were no great learnings, if you will, about, uh, about risk in general. Uh, let me just take the second point. Um, in terms of investing in uh, financial institutions, um, I think there are two aspects uh, when we look at financial institutions, quite apart from the value test. Uh, the first aspect, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we look at some of these financial institutions as proxies for the economy as a whole. Um, and, and therefore, uh, we make our decisions uh, uh, looking around that issue. Uh, the other uh, possibility will be uh, looking at institutions, and this is not just uh, limited to financial institutions, but really looking at companies um, where they may be doing a transformational deal or they may be themselves in transformation or an, an inflection point. Uh, those will be companies that will be of interest to us as well. Hi, I'm Joyce from Bloomberg. Um, in your earlier statement... Where are you from, please? Bloomberg. Ah, oh, okay, sorry. Um, you said you did not anticipate the speed and depth of last year's global financial crisis. Um, can you just ask, on hindsight, what could you have done better to read the market? And looking ahead, um, is there anything in place to um, make sure that this doesn't happen? Yeah. Um, I think one of the assumptions which turned out to be a wrong assumption that we have made or we have sort of taken for granted. Um, uh, we were looking at the markets and we felt that there could be a downturn because there were different indicators and so on. Uh, but we were looking at the triggers in the wrong places. And part of the reason is because we made the assumption that the developed economies, particularly the large economies, 
uh, are well managed and that the regulatory risks are low. Um, and hence, we did not pay that much attention. So if you look at going forward, I would say today we pay a lot of attention to what is being said and done in the U.S., even when we don't have large exposures to the U.S., because that can affect the rest of us. Um, so that, that would be, I suppose, one major change that, uh, uh, that, has, has, that has happened.